Okay, so now let's actually get started with our expense tracker. So we want to make a components folder. So we can start our components here. And uh, the first components we're going to have is our balance. So balance.js. And uh, do RFC, you want to make a React functional component this time because this isn't going to involve, involve Redux. So Redux, the Redux part is going to be in main.js. So that's why we've done a class component. But for balance.js, we're just going to be doing a functional component. Okay, so this balance com balance component is just going to be going to be used to display the balance. So let's import this balance component instead of this hello. So let's import it inside our main.js and balance. You can click enter and that would automatically import it and close it with the like this. And uh, if it didn't automatically import it, just import it like this. So for this balance, we want to pass in the uh, the transactions from our from our Redux. So to do this. So we go to reduce.js, let's have our initial state now. So we're going to have some transactions. So that's going to be our, in our initial state. And this is going to be, initially it's going to be set to an empty array. So transactions, sorry. And now to actually get this, st this transactions. So as you can see, we're passing in the store and the persister into our main component. And our main component is a React uh, class Redux uh, component. So to actually get this, we go to map state to props. And this would, uh, so we'll do transactions. This doesn't have to be the same name as uh, as what we did inside reduce.js, but what does have to be the same name is uh, let's go to main.js. Uh, this so state dot transaction. So this transactions ha this one has to be the same as what we called it in our, our reduce.js, but this one doesn't have to be. So what this does it just changes it changes the state to a props. So now we can use our state to uh, as props inside our main component. And let's use object destructuring to get these transactions. So const, uh, let's put this inside render, sorry. And uh, transactions is equal to this dot props. So we are just taking transactions from this dot props. And uh, this dot props contains transactions uh, from this error function, which just returns uh, this, this error function returns an object, and this object contain, contains transactions, which is equal to state dot transactions, which is being taken from our reduce.js, this initial state. Okay, so right now it's going to be an empty array, but uh, let me just add some stuff in it. So go to reduce.js, and I'm just gonna just show you. I'm just gonna have a, a object, and I'll just give it an ID of one, just just the object of the ID. Uh, so I can just console.log this now. So console.log transactions, just to show you that everything is working. So if I refresh now, inspect element, and console. I refresh it's undefined so as you can see it's undefined because we are not returning the state in our reducer so we need to actually return the state so return state and uh, this reducer is being called in our store.js as you can see we have uh, store let store equals so our state is being taken from create store so this is from redux and uh, passing in the persisted reducer so you don't really need to understand this, but I'm just explaining it if you want. Uh, if you want to understand this, so persist reducer is being uh, created from with persist reducer from Redux persist, and uh, we are this persist config is an object, and we're passing in the root reducer, and this re root reducer is being taken from our reducer.js. So reducer.js is <coughs> exporting this error function expense tracker reducer. So we need to return the state. So it, and uh, and we are importing the store which has the state now. Uh, inside app.js and we are passing it in through the provider to our main.js component which is a react uh, redux class component and we are getting the state like this so now if i actually console.log as you can see we have an object an array of objects and it only contains one object with the id and the id is one because i set that over here so let's remove this object we want it to be an empty array that was just for explaining purposes so now let's go to main.js and we want to pass in the transactions. Let's move this console.org too. We want to pass in the transactions to our balance so we can uh, calculate the balance from the transactions. So we'll do transactions and transactions. So we are passing in the transactions as props to our balance component. And we can receive this props. Uh, so if we go to balance.js, we can receive this props inside this function. Sorry. Uh, so we can do, we can receive it three ways. <coughs> so we can receive it as props and then we can console.log props dot whatever the props was called, so it was called transactions. 
and now this is this should also console the log just like that okay or we can receive it as uh, or we could receive it as props and then do object destructuring which is the preferred way and uh, take transactions from props and then if I now we just need to console the log transactions instead of props transactions now if I refresh it still works and uh, the most preferred way is I can do object destructuring but not here and do it over here so I'll just uh, do transactions so instead of getting props and then doing object destructuring we'll just do it over here instead and uh, so now if I just console the log transactions as you can see it's being console the log perfectly and it's working so now let's move this console the log and uh, display our transactions and now as you can see we have nothing because transactions is contains nothing so what we want to do now is go through all the transactions and then uh, get the amount of all of, of the sum of all of those transactions so let's remove this so what we want to do is go inside this functional component and uh, do const amount is equal to transactions dot map so we want to go through all the transactions and then this would give us the transaction by one by one in an arrow function or a function whatever you want and then so I'm going to use the arrow function and then we can just uh, return transaction dot amount so when we create a, a transaction we haven't actually created it right now but when we create a, a transaction we're going to have an ID and amount and also the text of that transaction which is going to be like for example rent and the amount is going to be how much the rent was and the ID is just going to be an ID so we can so when we delete the transaction we can find that transaction by its ID and we'll have a unique ID so right now we're just uh, getting all the transactions and returning the transaction just to make this uh, just to explain this better we can do it like that as a function and return transaction uh, return transaction dot amount so that's basically what we're doing by removing these and removing the return it just returns it automatically and everything all the and uh, the amount will be stored inside amount and now what we want to do is uh, so now we want to get the total of these of this amount so let's do const total is equal to amount dot reduce so we're going to be using the reduce function from uh, method from javascript and uh, this is going to give us a accumulator function so accumulation and uh, accumulator and uh, the amount or let's just call this item so it doesn't mess up with the amount that we already have so item and then this would be an error function and it would return the accumulation the er, the sum already plus the item and also this takes in uh, the initial value of the accumulation so zero so basically this is going to be set to zero at the beginning and then we're going to be going through all the, uh, the amounts and then the item uh, will add it to the ACC and at the beginning it's going to be equal to zero and we'll just add the amounts one by one so now the total should have our total so if I do total over here display the total let's check it out it says not a number oh that's because we have a empty array inside transactions so let's actually just have some dummy data for now so let's go to reducer.js and have just a few objects so id set it to one uh, text set it to just a string with some text and we'll give it the amount and we'll set that for now to 10 and do we have an error here? oh sorry to do this the colon and i'm just going to copy this wait let me add a comma and then i'll copy it and just paste it like th three times and then change the id to three four the text keep it the same just mess about with these a bit okay so now it should return 20 plus 10 plus 15 plus 10 which would be uh, 55 so let me go to our chrome refresh so it says not a number because we are getting an error and the issue is our old data has been cached you might not get this error but i am so if i consult the log transactions transactions and i refresh well, as you can see it still has that one object that has an id of one so so to fix this just uh, go to application you might not find it here so click on this errors and you'll probably find application here and we want to clear our site data so this would delete everything we already had so now if i if i close uh, close this as you can see we have 55 which is the sum of all the amounts of our transactions so if i go to reduce our so 10 plus 15 plus 10 plus 20. so okay so as you can see it's being displayed 
So what I want to do is just drop it inside the H1. So H1 and put a dollar sign as well and then put total. And uh, also I just want to put a H3 and put balance. Actually I'm going to change that to H4 and make it a bit smaller. H4. So now let's go check it out. As you can see it says balance and $55. So also I want to go to main.js and give this div a class name for styling purposes and it will just be container. So this container class has been implemented in our app.css that you copied and pasted. So now if I refresh as you can see it's gone a bit to the left. Okay so now what I want to do is uh, actually create a transaction. 